Hi, it's me. Who cares what day it is? Um, I'm making dinner tonight, so I thought I'm a little bit bored while I'm waiting for the sauce to cook down. So I thought I'd just do a video and talk to you guys about the newish 4K release of all the Mad Max movies. So this is gonna be a box set review. Thankfully, I have already watched these movies, so I can also kind of speak to maybe the quality of the videos, which I normally don't do. Uh, you get to see a different room today. Our kitchen, our house, oh, I don't know how to talk about it. Our house is a little bit of a weird setup. Um, our stove and fridge are in a back room by themselves because apparently the previous owner, there was only one other owner of this house before us. Um, they used to have a gas stove and she was super paranoid about having gas in the house. So she thought it'd be safer to have it kind of back here, even though the kitchen is just right through that doorway. Um, but yeah, she thought if anything bad happened, I guess they'd be safe because it was back in this area. Anyways, um, I'm making a nice pasta dinner, which I love. I don't cook very often, but I offered to do it tonight because it's Friday. And yeah, so let's get into Mad Max, the Mad, Max Anthology box set. So this box set was put out by Warner Brothers. It's not anything super special as you can see. It's pretty bare bones, basic box set. Comes in a sleeve and then uh, something that I'm not gonna complain too much about. It comes just uh, like this. <laughs> One case uh, and four places to put your films. So it's a, or your disc. So. Yeah, this is a little disappointing. Oh, I guess I left one out, but, um, hmm. You know, the fact that they're all just plain, well, you know, this isn't a vinegar syndrome, and this isn't a Arrow Video small boutique release. Um, so you're getting basically the bare bones, nothing fancy. It's kind of sad actually, because I would say this is one of the strongest franchises, as in all the films are very good. And I feel like that was just emphasized by rewatching them all on 4K. So I will say right up front, this is a disclaimer. Well, this is my uh, verdict. Sorry, my hair is insane. I also just woke up from a nap. Um, okay, so I would buy these. Uh, I mean, I did, or we did, but I would recommend them if you like these the Mad Max movies. I swear watching them on 4K was like watching them for the first time and I must have seen them just on Blu-ray at least the first three or Blu-ray quality because I swear when I watched I swear when I watched them this time it was a totally different experience and I honestly loved all of these films. The only downside was Mad Max Fury Road, which is an amazing film in my opinion, doesn't hold up the best. I would still give it five stars, but the, some of the CG effects in that film don't look good on 4K. Maybe it's just me being nitpicky. I don't love CG. I think that is what I like so much about the first three films is like, it's basically all practical effects. Uh, George Miller is a genius like the fact that he came back and I think in his 70s he did Mad Max Fury Road that movie is fucking awesome the ideas the looks the war boys the chrome uh, Charlize Theron with a shaved head Tom Hardy is really good in it uh, it's one of my favorite movies so I'm just gonna give you a little um, I'm gonna get a little more personal here today and like well we're already sitting in my kitchen now making dinner so why not right um i grew up in a household where we weren't really allowed watching movies or television not that often it was like a big deal if we ever went to the movies so it's part of the reason why i don't have any strong attachments to any of these horror franchises even though as a kid i was born in the mid 80s i never watched you know, your Friday the 13th or Nightmare on Elm Street, even Halloween. Um, so I don't really have any sort of attachment to those films and then watching them now as an adult, adult, you know, I think there's better stuff out there, but I totally get why people have 
strong attachments to these franchises. And I will say Wes Craven, well, I mean, John Carpenter's Halloween is one of the most perfect horror films ever made, but okay, the rest of the franchise kind of falls apart a little bit. Um, Wes Craven also did, I think, an amazing job with his franchises. Toby Hooper also is great, but you know, I'm coming to these things so late and like I said, there's other stuff that's out that I enjoy more and I don't have this like history of watching these things with my friends when I was little or anything like that. And same thing with Mad Max. Okay, so I don't think I even saw any of the Mad Max films until they announced that George Miller was coming back to do Fury Road, to do a new Mad Max movie. And my husband, who was my boyfriend at the time, told me and I probably was just like, okay, cool, I've never seen any of the Mad Max movies, and he probably just um, said, okay, let's watch them. <laughs> but um, yeah, so I've watched them only somewhat recently, but rewatching them again on 4K is like a whole new experience, and I love all of these films. I would say the second one is maybe the weakest for me. It's still so good, but I love number three, Tina Turner like nails it, the costumes, everything. It's kind of a weird disjointed movie where there's like, you know, the Thunderdome part of it and then you go, it like turns into a kid's movie, almost like uh, Peter Pan type of thing. So, I mean that part, but I really like actually both parts. So it's fun, I think, to watch. It's All these films, like I said, are so creative. It's interesting to see some of the same characters throughout the film, but they're maybe not playing, or same actors, they're maybe not even playing the same characters. Is Mad Max even like the same person? Is it in sort of a sequential timeline? I mean, obviously Tom Hardy plays Mad Max in the last one, so it's not the same person, but is it just Mad <laughs> Maxes, you know? Uh, how can I explain this? Like, it doesn't always seem like even when Mel Gibson's playing Mad Max throughout the franchise, the first three films, is he always playing the same character or it's kind of ambiguous in a way that I like. A lot of it is ambiguous. I think I talk about this in other movie reviews. It's not explained what happened, why we're in this post-apocalyptic world. But that's kind of the fun. I hate when movies over explain, just throw me into it and let me go along for the ride. I don't want to be like overloaded with a ton of exposition. I want to just like make things up in my own head. Uh, I want to fill in the blanks my own self. I think that is really fun. So yeah, Mad Max Fury or Mad Max Anthology on 4K. So I've seen this uh, every time I go to Walmart. It's basically the only 4K there. Uh, where are regular people buying 4K videos? Nowhere. Does nobody watch 4K? Is this just like a boutique thing? Um, it's always kind of upsetting when you, I don't go to Walmart that often. I have a small Walmart close to us and honestly, their physical media section is kind of a nightmare and there's not really a lot going on in there. It sucks. Um, but thankfully, uh, we have a thrift store in town as well. And somehow there's a lot of times miraculously great movies donated there on Blu-ray and I found 4Ks there a couple weeks ago. Very exciting, very sad that maybe they didn't like, I think some of them were brand new. Anyways, so someone in my, in my small town is buying things on 4K and Blu-ray, high definition movies. And, um, I mean, I guess that's what's happening. People just buy them online. I guess Best Buy is more of a place, but I'm, I don't feel like if you walk into a store anywhere, you're, it's easy to just buy 4Ks, which really sucks. Um, maybe it's just me. Maybe it doesn't matter. Maybe the whole world is burning down around us and who even cares? So if you like the Mad Max movies and you've been sitting on this because it is kind of pricey, um, for how bare bones this box set is, it's around $80 Canadian. I'm sure you can find it on sale. I'm sure it's cheaper in the U.S. because everything is. Um, but I would say it's worth it. I had a lot of fun. There are some special features as far as I can tell. I haven't watched any of them. 
and you get the digital movie code so that's fun if you want to watch it on your phone or something like that um yeah so i think that's it for me for this week um if you're interested in knowing more about what i'm making for dinner uh, comment below. Sorry if this style of video is a bit visually distract distracting or you know something but I'm probably also not really going to edit it. I'll just upload it and add a thumbnail later. Um, but yeah that's it for me for this week. Bye for now. I now mix the sauce with the pasta. It is so important to save some of your pasta water to get it to bind so it like nicely coats your pasta. I threw in the shrimp, I threw in some extra tarragon. There's actually like quite a bit of Parmesan cheese or Parmesan or Reggaeton or Reggaeton, whatever it's called. I'm just gonna let it uh, warm up the shrimp. They're already cooked. And then I'm gonna top it with some fresh basil and some more cheese and I'm gonna serve it up and it's going to be mm, so beautiful. You know, I think this would be great to eat while you watch a beautiful Argento movie, something simple. An Italian like opera, a feast for thy mouth, a feast for thine eyes. It's gonna be so good. Uh, yeah, and that's it. Good night.